What's up, everybody? It's Buffalo Ben 15 Golf back at it again. And today we travel up north to the Gaylord Golf Club in Gaylord, Michigan, guys. Absolutely unreal golf course. I tell you what, guys, the round I played here today had almost no preparation. No anticipation whatsoever of me playing here. To be honest, less than 12 hours before teeing off, I had no idea I would be teeing it up at the oldest golf course in the Michigan golf mecca, Gaylord, Michigan. I tell you what, is full of golf courses everywhere you look. You got treetops, you got the Loon Golf Resort, you got Mishaway Pines. You have the Otsego Club, but one that really flies under the radar is Gaylord Golf Club, the original, oldest course in the town. 1924 is when this course opened, and it has matured into just a masterpiece over its nearly 100 years that it will be celebrating next year. What an accomplishment for any golf course. And this course is every bit as difficult as it is classic and historic. From the blue tees which we're playing today, it is a 70.1 rating and a 135 slope. And that's only from 6,100 yards. Yeah, you heard that right, a 135 slope course from 6,100 yards. I honestly don't think I've ever seen that before. And um, I definitely could have played the Blacks, which are only 6,500 at this course. And it would have been a 72.4 rating, 137 slope, I believe. But as you see here, I am playing with somebody else here. This is JT. He actually goes to Ferris as well as I do. No GPS or no no uh, whole map on uh, this course, but the signs themselves in their own right, they are pretty nice. Yeah, sorry to interrupt there. I thought I'd show you their uh, hole signs. I thought they looked pretty good. Uh, but yeah, JT, uh, he's not in PGA management. Um, I mean, not like I'm not willing to play with golfers that aren't in PGA management. I'm willing to play with anybody. Um, no, it's that time nice. of my life, you know, when I'm in college, I'm going to play with all sorts of characters right um but jt i mean he's a decent golfer he shoots about a hundred i would say per round um he doesn't hit the ball very far i actually played with him last week at uh, the lakes course at the loon golf resort um i ended up shooting an 81 if i keep shooting shots like that i might top that score that was a really nice approach after an out-of-position tee shot. Uh, but we played the tips that week. And um, I tell you what, uh, some of the holes had, like, force carries over water and, like, big ravines and wetlands. And I remember he absolutely smoked one of his tee shots, like one of the best hit tee shots of the day. And it still went in the water short of the fairway. It was like a 230 carry in order to get to the fairway. And um, it just was a little bit too much for him. So um, coming back and playing with him again uh, the following week, we decided maybe we'll uh, tone it down just a little bit. Um, normally he plays the white tees uh, basically on every course he plays. Um, I wanted to play the black tees, and I knew that was definitely too much for him, so our compromise was we're just going to play the blue tees. So, again, still a very difficult course, 135 slope. This course can absolutely eat you alive if you play it wrong, which obviously on this tee shot I don't. Oh, we're starting to heat up a little bit now. That was different, guys. With that nice... Oh, look at the driver bullseye. shot. A perfect shot right on the nose. Been working.
working on my wedges a lot at the range. Less knee bend makes that swing taller, makes it go further. Don't swipe under it. Now, as you see here, playing a little bit less distance, I take full advantage of it with this drive. I've just got a little flip wedge in here. <laughs> I don't think I've ever hit a wedge that thin and not sculled it. Holy crap. I took absolutely no divot there. <laughs> that ball spun back like about 20 feet. I don't know if they're, I don't know if you can see it. Well, obviously you can't now because I zoomed in on JT, but yeah, now you can might be able to see it. Uh, on the extreme right side of your screen is actually my pitch mark, and it spun back like 20 feet. Boy, did I uh, get some spin on that one. Partly because it was downhill back to the hole. You know how it goes with older courses. A lot of the greens are sloped front to back, you know, and um, just got a little too frisky with that one. Ah, uh, these are the needless ones. We need to have these twice as close. Just tap in pars. Thank you very much. Oh, what is, going what is he doing? And that's what can happen. Needless bogey there. Oh, after that tee shot. Come on, guys. I tell you what. If I'm making bogeys after those tee shots, I am not going to get myself to that four handicap by the end of the year that I'm looking for, as well as the sub-49 hole average. Man, those have just got to get better. Got to try to put it behind us, though, here. First par three, 146 yards. Uh, didn't mean to go right at the house. Um, there's a bunker that I actually just barely stayed out of. Um, so, do have a pretty straightforward chip here. So, first chip on the first hole was, it was okay. But this one I definitely have some more green to work with. It's a lot flatter. Just yes. Just beautiful. That's what we're talking about, guys. Yeah, I never skipped the beat. I still know how to stiff those chips. Again, though, about the same distance as the one in the last hole. So, no guarantees here. Not this time. It goes down. All right. Bogey par, bogey par. You know, two over through four. Might not be nice, but it's all right. We can't both avoid it, though. Man. Ah, oh, you hate to see it. Ah, oh, you hate to see it. This is the elevation change up in this part of the state, eh? So this is what you get. All the ski resorts up here are skiing in the summer. Or, excuse me. Oh, my God. Skiing in the winter, golfing in the summer. That's Gaylord. Another advantage of playing from a little bit forward. A par five. The same distance as many long par fours that I've played. Only 444 yards with the downhill tee shot. They're going to go nuts when he hits this thing. And that's where he's headed just a little bit right of it, but this ball appears to be hammered. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, that's so far up there. That new LTDX is really growing on me, guys. Wow, what a tee shot. Should be able to stick one in there close with a six iron. Irons have been Has the stage ever been set better than this? 170 yards to the pin. Six iron, perfect lie. And that shot is pretty close to perfectly average. A little bit thin, a little bit of a pull. Ah, uh, not going to get it done. And now, and now, guys, you are going to see from this chip shot, and if you were paying attention, 
and can remember uh, on hole one, you are going to see why this is a 135 slope course. If you miss the greens to the left or to the right, yet look at how long of a kick Don't forward that ball to took. That, that was insane. Mm. I mean, that was just... Total, it looked like just a classic fringe boost, but those are the greens at Gaylord Golf Club. A lot of them are kind of like punch bowls, but the punch bowls aren't so severe that the ball will like roll back to the center a little bit. Um, and that's what makes these greens so tough and so tough to chip to pins with. And as you see here, definitely a contributing factor to denying me a birdie. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I didn't make birdie on that hole. Shame that on me. Five, though. I need to be birdie in those. That's all right. We're two over through five. It's not bad. And that's with missing a really short one. So, so far, so good, guys. We've been playing pretty decent. Two over through five is definitely what we like to call staying on schedule when it comes to breaking 80. I mean, you're giving yourself a chance. You haven't taken yourself out of it. You can win. You can't win the Stanley Cup in November, but you can lose it. And I haven't lost it. All right. So now we go on to the sixth par three, 155 ish yards. Um, absolutely smoke this eight iron. Way to the back tier of the green, and wait until you guys see the putt I have ahead of me. JT hits his five wood here. Yeah, like I said, he's not that long of a hitter. So, definitely had to do On that there. On the green, but in a different area code. So, as you see here, guys, I have got like a 70-foot putt down not one but two ridges. It's a three-tier green. I'm all the way at the back tier with a false front. And um, this is easily a putt that could roll off the green, especially later in the day, by over 10 yards. Well, here it comes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that took a little peek. Is it too much spin? It goes from about six inches away oh, you're to that. I mean, that got within a half foot. The stroke that I made on that ball was like I was trying to hit maximum a 10-foot putt. It was absolutely insane. I was so lucky I was playing early in the morning when the greens weren't as fast as they get at like 2 p.m. I tell you what, guys, as the greens were drying out, though, on this day, I seriously thought that they were pretty darn close to like bucks run or like emerald quality like and speed so really really a treat to play here and um i really enjoyed the greens even though they were just absolutely dastardly i mean you knew that every putt was going to roll exactly how you thought it would which was always nice this is another shorter par five but as you see it's not a wide hole at all. This is not the type of tee shot you want to see coming off a bogey. This is definitely one of the tightest ones I've seen all year in any course that I've played. But when you want to break 80 every now and then, you need to step up and just hit a good shot. Oh, that's it hard. When you have no other choice but to absolutely thread the needle, which is exactly what we do on that see drive. JT can follow that up. And as you see here, JT, seeing me do that maybe Close. gives him a little confidence as he smokes his right down the governor's office. Uh, not as far as me, obviously, but oh well, not. Oh, come on, Bennett. Why are you saying that? Uh, but anyways, guys, five iron in hand, another iron into a par five. This time the lie is a lot tougher, though. A lot above my feet. Oh, but we better. clip this real me. nice. Oh, and it's chasing, Stop too. There, ball. Come on. Come on. Pretty close. Not bad. 
That is an eagleable shot right there. All right, gang. This is what we have for an eagle. We got to putt through a decent amount of fringe, but it is downhill, so it's at, the, at least the first part. And then at the end of the putt, it goes uphill again. So this is a very, very makeable putt. I know I'm getting better at golf, but chances like these still don't come around very much. God, if I hit it a little more flush, I would have even been on the green. Just remember, folks, you always keep a pole like you're fishing. All right, everybody. Eagle putt here at the Gaylord Golf Club. Gaylord Golf Club. Ladies and gentlemen, witness perfection. As he's about to hit the eagle stroke. I've played almost a thousand holes on this channel. There's bound to be one. Come on. Come on, ball. Come on. Come on. Do it. Oh, my goodness. This, this is not good. It's beyond hard to watch. Oh, my God. You'll do for today, folks. Why? Eagle for today. First, it was Ironwood. Then it was Cherry Creek. Now it's this. Ladies and gentlemen, you just witnessed the eagle putt curse. Every time, at least on video, that I've ever had an eagle putt, I've left it short. Every single time. I can't really think of any others other than Iron Wooden here, but... I know there's a few, and barely got I've made three eagles in my life, and it sucks that I've never got any on video to this uh, year, the by the way. Between, like, and, like, that's little inflection, man, really. So, JT oh, definitely yeah. has a chance to top that drive. Sent mine a little left, and boy, does he ever oh, yeah. easily the best one he's had so far today. Always get other people's amazing shots on video, but never my own, right? Uh, but anyways, trying to punch with a six iron here. I kind of rise it up a little bit. I hit it a lot higher than I wanted to, but it actually works out pretty well. I'm about 20 feet away from the hole. I'm on the green. On that ball. With where... Man, I did not think I would get that much bite on it or that much spin. Wow, that was crazy. So, definitely have a really makeable birdie putt here, but at the same time, this is one of those putts. I mean, we all know those types of putts. This, first of all, this pin, easily the hardest I've seen all day and the hardest I saw all day. It was incredible. Sit. Watch this. When that ball left my face, Look it looked like maybe a 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10 putt. This thing ends up 15 feet away off of a 20-footer. Because about a foot long and left of that hole was a giant ridge that that ball just went down. And now I'm putting straight back up, up it again. I'm dead serious when I say if I don't get this to the hole, it could roll back to my feet. I swear, some of these greens at Gaylord Golf Club, you know, it's one of those things. I've always thought that older courses tend to have just as tough greens, even though they're like circular usually or close to circular as the newer courses that have a lot more dimension to the greens. And the reason I say that is because now with the technology, now with uh, the greenskeeper's ability to cut the grass and roll it a lot tighter and a lot uh, uh, higher on the stem meter, those slopes that used to be pretty routine on those older greens, like on the Donald Ross courses, um, like at Rackham as well, um, they have become so pronounced just due to the fact that they're faster. 
And Gaylord Golf Club is a perfect example of that. And that's why you will see when you come to this course, and I guarantee you, you will have a couple putts where you feel like Happy Gilmore with that clown spitting your ball out of its mouth. I'm dead serious. And um, as you see here, just kind of an averagely played hole on this ninth here. Pretty straightaway par four. Just leaked my tee shot a little bit. Had another six iron punch. Did okay with it. Just um, chip up to the green. That actually was a pretty good chip. And now we got six and a half footer. The classic distance that separates the men from the boys. As Raymond Floyd described back in the day. And we just play a little too much break there. Oh boy, bogey, bogey finish to finish at plus four forty. Ouch! To deny us a sub forty. We got the back though. I mean, if you eliminate the three putt on eight and the little one I missed on three, we're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty damn good. Yeah. Here at the Gaylord Golf Club. Yep. JT. JT. Nice enough to. Nice enough to invite me up here, and uh, boy, it's been a treat. It really has. So there you have it, guys. A plus 440. Definitely not too shabby. Uh, three out of seven fairways, five out of nine greens. No penalties. That always helps when you're penalty free. But gosh, guys, look at those putt totals. 19 putts. 45%. At least, no, no, excuse me. 47.5%, right? Because 100 divided by 40 is 2.5. Um, 47.5% of my strokes were putts, were on the green. Yikes. That needs to get better on the back. Really, and as the greens are going to speed up, as it gets warmer, as it gets a little bit uh, less humid, as the dew burns up, I'm going to have to step it up. All right, I know, I know, I made a couple decent ones out there, um, as well as just decent lag putts, but guys, we need to do better. Than we just did. I mean, nine, that putt could have easily gone in. Um, th three, that putt could have easily gone in. Just little things, guys. It's funny how, like, the strokes that go the shortest distance matter the most. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. You know what else is crazy? Right in front of you, as you see right here, the Gaylord Golf Club welcome sign. Um right off uh, the, the road that goes to the course. Um, absolutely beautiful. I mean, just look at that. Um, with the tall pines with not a whole lot of needles until like 30, 40 feet in the air. Oh, my gosh. Just gorgeous, this course was. And um, I, I know as you guys saw, I would say, and I, and I do apologize, I was definitely a little bit underdressed in this video. I didn't have my usual hat on I had I, I didn't really have a golf shirt under my Athens quarter zip that I was using um it was just basically a t-shirt I mean to be honest I I do apologize to Gaylord Golf Club I know you guys deserve better than that um but again I had absolutely no idea I was playing here um even like 12 hours before me and JT um, he actually lives in Gaylord, so that's why he invited me up there, and he just, uh, we, we played a few times up there this summer, it was a great time, um, and, uh, it was just, uh, a treat to be able to get onto this course, um, but the thing was, um, I, I mean, at the time I was, and now I'm back at school, obviously, at the time I was working at Bucks Run, he actually works at Mishaway Pines, uh, one of those courses I, I mentioned. And so he gets a lot of 
discounts um, around the area. Like a lot of courses, I mean, because they're so closely affiliated with each other when it comes to vacations and stuff, he gets like half off at most courses in town, you know? So um, uh, we just tried to work it out with our schedules the best we could. Um, he didn't, I, I had a day off that I didn't, um, know that he was also going to have the day off too. We were waiting for it. And he finally texted me at like 11 at night while I was still in Mount Pleasant. He said, Hey dude, I, I got my schedule and I don't have work tomorrow. So, um, it was just such a relief to hear that. And, um, I was like, all right, dude, I'm going to drive up there as fast as I can. So I packed like as little stuff as I needed for the night, but could still get by, book the tea time on the way. Uh, and, um, I got half off. I got to play Gaylord golf club for 35 bucks. It was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. And I was just, I was just overjoyed. It was such a treat, such a treat. JT, you're awesome. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was definitely last minute, so I didn't have a whole lot of time to get ready. So, at least the golf has looked better than the way I looked in this video. I'll tell you that much. All right, guys, back nine to come soon. This video is a little shorter as well. I saw you guys blew up that PAT highlight video. I'm so glad you guys enjoyed that. One of my biggest accomplishments of the year. Um, but, uh... I'm trying to kind of take note of that, the fact that that was only like a seven-minute video, trying to make the course vlogs a little shorter, trying to cut them down to maybe 21, 22 minutes. I think that's probably my sweet spot. We're getting there. This is Buffalo Ben 15 signing off. Have a good day, everyone.